So we're ready for the word? Yes. All right. Well, today we're going to conclude our series called At the Table. Now, this is a series on the family. See, so many memories are made at the family table. Fact of the matter is, when it is all said and done, it will be our family that makes us or breaks us. It'll be our family that will provide for us our highest highs or our lowest lows. And for so many, it's going to be both. Now, in this series, we've talked about marriage and we've talked about parenting. Two Sundays ago, I began a two-part series on parenting. And I'm going to conclude that this morning. I'm calling this lesson the Ten Commandments of parenting. First of all, I want to begin by reminding you of the first five that I gave you in part one, and then I'm going to give you the final five. So I'm going to go through the first five very, very quickly because they're just a reminder of what I've already uh, given to you. The first commandment for parenting is this, and that is about your kids. Don't provide them with everything they want. Don't provide them with everything they want. Reject the temptation to spoil them. See, see, it's cute when they're little, not so much when they're 30. <laughs> Commandment number two, don't permit them to do as they please. Hold them accountable to the rules of the house. And by the way, you do have some rules for the house, right? You do have some rules for the family. And you do enforce them, Correct. And here's something else you need to understand, and that is mom and dad must be on the same page with the rules. Very, very important. Third commandment is this, and that is don't pressure them to become what you want them to become. Yeah, don't pressure them to be who you want them to be. Help them recognize their giftings and how that those giftings that are theirs can be directed. And see, the unique, their unique giftings are a clue to who God wants them to become. They're a clue to their future. Number four, don't pretend to be perfect. Don't pretend to be perfect. Resist the temptation to present yourself as Superman or Wonder Woman. Listen, you're not, and let me tell you, as a kid, you weren't. So, so don't pretend to be perfect. And number five, don't protect them from the consequences of their actions. Yes. See, taking responsibility for our actions helps to build character. The fact of the matter is we should learn from our mistakes, especially from the consequences that come along with those mistakes. Now, if you were not here for part one, I recommend that you go to our website. I recommend that you listen to that lesson. All right, I'm gonna give you uh, my number six. Uh, the sixth commandment for parenting is this, and that is don't parade their siblings before them. Yeah, don't parade their siblings before them. In the book of Genesis, it speaks of a man named Jacob. And the Bible says that Jacob had 12 sons. But in chapter 37 and verse number 3, it says that Joseph was his favorite. Wait, what? Yep, Jacob had a favorite son, and it was obvious to everyone, and especially to Joseph's siblings. See, see jo uh, Jacob treated his son Joseph different than, than he treated all of the rest of the boys. Bad mistake. Right. Unfair to the other 11. And it placed a target on Joseph's back. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse number 21 says to, that showing partiality is never good. So here's what I encourage you today, and that is refuse to play the comparison game. Because here's the deal, no two siblings are alike. They're gonna have different personalities, they're gonna have different likes, they're gonna have different dislikes, and, and they're going to have different needs. See, don't assume that your second, third, or fourth child will be like your first. They won't be. That's why we cannot parent them all alike. 
And it's amazing to me how some people will say, you know, I don't understand why this child, you know, turned out this way and the other child turned out the other way and the other one turned out another way. I parented him. I treated them all alike. <laughs> you what? Why in the world would you want to do that? Why would you want to take people that are absolutely, completely different and parent them the same? Yeah. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So we cannot parent our children all alike because they are not all alike. So, so, so never say to one of your children, why can't you be more like your brother? Or why can't you be more like your sister? Why? Because they're not their brother. They're not their sister. They are their own unique person. See, one size does not fit all when it comes to parenting, and we need to understand that. And so this is why mom and dad must spend some one-on-one -on -one time with each individual child. See, you can't really know a child without spending time with them. I was a rule follower as a child. I followed the rules. I, I, I didn't like getting into trouble. Actually, I didn't like the consequences have you ever heard of stars and stripes forever? <laughs> My dad laid on the stripes and I saw the stars. I didn't like getting into trouble. I didn't, I didn't like the consequences for breaking the rules. In fact, of the matter is, especially when I was a little boy, all my father had to do to me was just give me the look. How many ever had the look? All it took for my, from my dad was for my dad to give me the look, and when I got the look from my father, I straightened up. Now, my older brother, on the other hand, was not a rule follower. He would constantly step over the boundary line. Listen, a look did nothing to him, and I, I want to tell you that it took a two before upside the head to get his attention. We're not all alike and should not be parented alike. Refuse to play the comparison game with your kids because, because you are not comparing apples to apples. The seventh commandment for parenting is this, and that is don't forget to praise them. Don't, don't forget to praise them. Proverbs 12, verse 25 says, an encouraging word will cheer a person up. See, here's the deal. Children have an inordinate desire to receive the approval of their parents. And that desire never goes away. It doesn't matter how old you are, you still are in need of the approval of your parents. And dads, this goes double for you. Because here's how it goes. Here's how it goes. Children look to mom for affection. They look to dad for affirmation. See, see, when a child falls down and goes boom, they don't go to daddy. <laughs> no, they don't go to daddy because, because they know that daddy will just say, you're okay. You're okay. Brush it off. Big boys don't cry. Dry up those tears. I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> When Krista was in the third grade, she fell off of the monkey bars on the school playground. The principal's office called me in my office at church to come and, and get her. I immediately called my wife, and we both, my wife was at home, and we both raced to the school. When we got there and assessed Krista's condition, I, I, I said, she'll be okay. She'll, she'll be okay. We'll, we'll take her home for the day, though. Oh, so, so, such compassion. She'll be okay, but we'll take her home for the day, though. My wife said, Mike, there's a bone sticking out of her arm. <laughs> Off to the emergency room we went, and two surgeries later, she was okay. <laughs> That's why children don't go to their dad for sympathy or affection. 
they go to mom because they, mom, they know that mom is going to love on them. Mom is going to hug them. Mom is going to kiss them. Mom is going to dry their, dry their eyes. But they do go to dad for affirmation. They must make their father proud. Hear me, mom and dad. Become your kids' number one cheerleaders. Tell them why they can't while everyone else is telling them why they can't. Be there for them for every event. Cheer them on. Show interest in what they are interested in. I must have watched a million baseball games for Chad. For Krista, it was gymnastics and cheerleading and homecoming princess and volleyball and basketball and debate and track. That's all she did. <laughs> Krista weighed a buck 20 in high school and threw the shot put in track at 120 pounds and won. Gymnastics had built her muscles, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it was all the fighting with her brother. I don't know. But my wife and I were there for both of our kids. And hear me, I don't regret a single moment. Don't forget to praise your kids. Give them the affection. Give the affirmation that they so desperately need. And hear me this morning, they need it from you more than they need it from anyone else. And if this void or, or this need is not filled up by you, they will try everyone and they will try everything in order to meet that need. Sometimes addictions begin with someone trying to fill a void that should have been filled by mom and dad. Not always, but sometimes. Commandment number eight. Be their parent, not their best friend. Be their parent, not their buddy. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8 and 9 says, My child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. What you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. Be their parent not their best friend. I remember years ago, a mother who treated her daughter as her best friend when she was growing up. It, it didn't turn out well. She, she refused to discipline her daughter or give her daughter any rules or, or any boundaries. One night, this teenage girl was out with a, with a, with a friend and her friend looked at her watch and said, oh, no, oh, no, I'm late. Oh, no, oh, no, it's past my curfew. Oh, oh, I'm going to be in so much trouble. The other teenage girl said, I wish my parents cared enough about me to give me a curfew. Hey, here's what parents need to understand, and that is kids won't always like you in your role. If you're actually a true parent, your kids are not always going to like you in your role. And let me just say this, parents, if your kids always like you, you're probably not parenting properly. See, your job as a parent is not to make your kids like you 100% of the time. That's not your role. Your job is to keep them safe. Your job is to, to help keep them out of trouble by teaching and training them. Your job is to set boundaries for them. Your job is to discipline them when they don't stay inside of those boundaries. Now, here's the good news this morning, and that is the time will come when your kids can become your best friends. Mine are. But it's after they're grown. When they're growing up, they need you to be their parent. Eli, the priest, refused to parent his kids, and they ended up bringing reproach on his ministry. 
Number nine this morning, the ninth commandment for parenting is this, prepare them for the real world. That's your job, mom. That's your dad, your job, dad. Prepare them for the real world. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6 says, direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, then they will not leave it. See, here's the truth. The real world is ugly. The real world is filled with disappointments. The real world isn't fair. See, see, the real world is not Six Flags or Disney World or Grandma's house. That's not the real world. The real world is filled with pain and problems and perversion. Aren't you glad you came to church to hear that? But it's the truth. That's the real world. Protect your kids, but don't overprotect them. I'm going to say that again. Protect your kids, but don't overprotect them. Reduce future disappointments by not setting them up for unrealistic expectations. See, don't make their world so perfect that they won't be able to function when they have to face the real world. And they will someday. They will someday. Listen, listen, participation trophies are not given out in the real world. The sun will not rise and set on your kids in the real world. Love your kids enough to prepare them for the real world. Not just a fairy tale world that mom and dad and Grammy and Papa create for them. Listen, listen, they cannot live life in a protective bubble forever. So protect them, but don't overprotect them. Prepare them for the real world because that's the world they're going to have to face. Number 10. Furnish them with a godly pattern to emulate. This might be the most important commandment of all. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 7 says, The godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children who follow them. See, see here's the truth this morning. We reproduce who we are, not who we want to be. I said, we reproduce who we are, not who we want to be. Somebody said the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I say, neither does the nut. <laughs> Hear me this morning, people. The greatest gift a parent can give their children. Are you ready for it? The greatest gift a parent can give their children is not, is not, it's not a new car at graduation. It's not a college education. It's not a big fat check to begin adulting with. The greatest gift that a parent can give a child is a godly example. Hey, mom and dad, do your kids ever see you read the Bible? Do they ever hear you pray? Hey, mom and dad, are you consistent in church attendance or, or is it hit and miss if there's nothing else going on? Hey, mom and dad, when you do come to church, do your kids see you participate? Hey, mom and dad, do you practice what you teach them? Or do you tell them, do as I say, not as I do? What kind of example are you setting before your kids? And hey, mom and dad, how do you treat each other? How do you treat each other? With love and respect? And hey, mom and dad, what do your kids hear you say about your church and its leadership? See, see, you can't consistently trash talk your church and then expect your kids to grow up and love it. Right. 
Furnish your kids with a godly pattern to emulate. Because we produce who we are, not who we want to be. So there you have it, the Ten Commandments for parenting. But let me give you a bonus commandment. Not going to charge you anything for this one. A bonus commandment, number 11, don't forget to pause and enjoy them. Psalms 127 verse 3 says, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. I understand that parenting is not all fun and games, and especially in those teenage years. But there's more good than bad, especially if you look for it. And parents, don't get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Take time to celebrate. Take time to have some fun. Take time to build a relationship with your kids. Take time for the family table. It may look different than it looked when I was growing up because when I was growing up, the family table was, was in the kitchen. Today it might be at McDonald's or Burger King or Taco Bell. I don't know where the family table is, but make time for the family table. Because here's what you will soon discover, and that is life goes by as fast as a 100-yard dash or a 100-yard race. Listen, I promise that you will will never regret, ever regret one single moment that you dedicated to your kids. But let me say this. Mamas, daddies, don't neglect each other. Don't neglect each other. See, see, you will have your kids at home for 18 to 20 plus years. Hopefully that's all. You know how it is with empty nesters, right? There's two kinds of empty nesters. One kind of empty nesters are those that cry when the kids move out. The other kind of empty nesters are those that change the locks. Change the locks. Yeah, listen, listen, you're going to have your kids at home for 18 to 20 plus years, hopefully, but you're going to have each other. Listen, you're going to have each other for 40, 50, 60, maybe 70 years. Listen, make sure there is something left after the kids are gone. Because if it's always about the kids and only about the kids and somewhere along the way, you are going to move away from one another and you're no longer going to have anything in common. And the thing that you had in common were the kids and going to the kids' ball games and doing the kids' events. But all of a sudden, you're not going to those ball games anymore. You're not doing those events anymore. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, your house becomes very, very quiet and all oh, it becomes very, very different. Listen, make sure that you spend time together, mom and dad, so that when the kids are fine, Finally gone and out of the house, you will have something left between the two of you. The takeaway from the message this morning is this. Godly parenting will produce both pressure and pleasure. Let me remind you of what I said in part one of this lesson. That is, parenting is a daunting task. Most of us started parenting when we were too young and totally untrained. 